Another world is possible. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. Elementary school students hold megaphones and chant these words. It is January 2017. My toddler, Zohar, and I take part in a children's march at Independence Mall. She rides in her stroller as we make one circuit on the sidewalk around the lawn. We try on the words for size. Another world is possible. Another world is possible. Through the waves of this past year, I have circled back to this phrase. Today, on Rosh Hashanah, the shofar calls to us, another world is possible. A new world is coming into being. This year, 5781, this second day of Tishrei, September 20th, 2020, on this very day. As we are stuck in the thick of a global pandemic, as fires rage, storms churn, hatreds burn, our grief weighing us down, we tune in to the notes of the shofar, whole and broken, descending and rising, staccato and sustained. Tikiya, shivarim, teruah. This year, we have had to reimagine so many aspects of how we perform the communal rituals of Rosh Hashanah, including our main mitzvah of blowing shofar, as Rabbi Abe described a few moments ago. And this year, as we yearn for more life, I want to invite us to hear the shofar's ancient songs anew. With each set of blasts, we loop back to Tikiyah. We declare Hayom Harat Olam. Today is the birthday of the world. Today, a new world is arriving. We sing these words over and over until they find a foothold in our broken hearts. The author Arundhati Roy writes, Another world is not only possible, she is on her way. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. Takiya. Shivarim trua. In our Haftarah this morning, we read the words of the prophet Jeremiah, Kol berama nishma, a voice is heard in Ramah, wailing, bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children who are no more. On this day of rebirth, our readings are soaked with mother's tears. Our rabbis teach that we hear the voices of the biblical mothers in the wail of the shofar. Rachel, Sarah, Hagar, even the mother of an enemy general named Sisera. Their sobbing is heard in the shofar's calls of shivarim and truah. A voice is heard in the wilderness of Canaan. Mother Sarah weeps for her Isaac. He has followed his father up Mount Moriah. There was a fire on the altar. In the Torah, Sarah is silent. The Midrash says she sobs, for she is sure Isaac is gone. A voice is heard in the desert. Mother Hagar weeps for her Ishmael. The cruel sun beats down on the sand. They have run out of water. She fears it is the end. A voice is heard by the window. An unnamed mother weeps for her Sisera. She waits and watches, wondering if her son will come home from the war. I am thinking of a protest sign I saw in June. When George Floyd called for his mama, all the mothers came running. 
this Rosh Hashanah, I am hearing a collective crying out, a chorus of voices of mothers, of fathers, of parents across time who have been summoned to this world on fire, this world of thirst, this world of war, this world of shortness of breath, from COVID lungs with knees on necks under smoke-yellowed skies. Kol berama nishma, a voice is heard on high. A voice is heard from Jerusalem and China, Italy and Queens. A voice is heard from Minnesota, Kenosha, Portland, here in Philadelphia. A voice is heard from nursing homes, hospitals, meatpacking plants, detention centers. A voice is heard through the windows and in the streets. The sobbing of Trua, the primal scream of Shivarim. Mothers weep for their children who are gone. Children weep for parents. Parents hold their breath, waiting for their children to come home, waiting for a time when their children can safely leave home to come home again. In the midst of all of this, avinu imenu, hold us, help us feel at home, Remind us to keep breathing. Today on Rosh Hashanah, the shofar wails shivarim truah, and all at once a voice calls to us, Tikiyah, stay with me. Another world is possible. A new world is arriving today. Hayom harat olam, we repeat a mantra, hayom harat olam. Right now, a new world is on her way. Whether we are ready or not, she is coming. We say it over and over until it takes root in our broken hearts. Breathe, push air through the shofar, listen, hayom Harat Olam. True Ah. It is May 31st, 2020. The sky is pink and orange as the holiday of Shavuot goes out. We hear the echoes of the shofar blasts from atop Mount Sinai. The voice of the shofar still ringing out as it did the day Torah was born. An eternal call to action. I gather on the corner of 6th and Market with a group of clergy led by Reverend Mark Kelly Tyler of Mother Bethel AME Church. We convene outside the Liberty Bell. I notice we are inside an open-air museum exhibition titled Freedom and Slavery in the Making of a New Nation. We have come to lift up the memory of George Floyd to bear witness to the tears of the city, to be a loving and stabilizing presence during this night of unrest, to pray. As we walk up Market Street towards City Hall, helicopters whir overhead, windows shatter, police officers line up in front of landmarks, groups of demonstrators move in the streets, People lie down on benches in bus stops with no other place to sleep. In my mind, I hear the shofar thundering, Ah. From the beginning, our black siblings in this country have struggled for liberation, for breath, and for life. We are rising up now, more and more of us, for black lives, for dignity, for justice in our cities, in the suburbs, in small towns. We are telling the stories of how this nation was built at once on the dream of freedom and on the stolen bodies and labor of human beings of African descent. More and more of us now in our Jewish communities of all hues are speaking out about how the legacy of systemic racism is lethal. As Jews rooted in Torah, rooted in memory, we will no longer be silent. 
we will no longer look away. Sound the shofar, chiru'ah, we lift up our voices for justice, for those who have died, those who have survived, for all who are yet to be born. We remember hayom harat olam, another world is indeed possible. She is coming into being on this very day. Reb Dovbear Pinson of Brooklyn's Iyun Center writes, the shofar is the midwife of the new year. The word shofar shares its Hebrew letters with the name of a heroic midwife in the Torah, Shifra. During the time we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, Shifra and Pua served as midwives for the Israelite community. When Pharaoh decrees that all Hebrew male babies be killed, Shifra and Pua refuse to follow these immoral orders. Shifra and Pua are role models for getting into good trouble, in the words of John Lewis of Blessed Memory. Shifra and Pua are courageous in their fight for life, and they are rewarded with God's blessing. They deliver the Hebrew babies and keep them alive each new life, a whole world. None of the children are theirs, and all of the children are theirs. Through their care, they have made it so. Through our care, we make it so. Chiru Ah, on this day, the shofar calls us to partner with God in the essential work of birth and rebirth, of life, liberation, and transformation. We cannot do this work alone. We must gather together again and again, somehow, some way. It hurts to be far from each other physically as we try to protect and care for one another. As we worry about our loved ones, our health and our health care, our finances, our democracy, rising anti-Semitism, the future of our planet, there is so much at stake. And there is so much we are carrying right now. It would make sense to curl inward beneath the weight of our worries. And yet, in this time of isolation, each of us here knows the power of connection, the power of community. I have been moved this year to see our BZBI community showing up and reaching out to be present for one another and our neighbors. As Suzanne Litke spoke about yesterday, since March, BZBIers have been checking in on one another weekly, showing up on Zoom to make online minyanim, sending care packages to each other for holidays, BZBIers have been giving tzedakah to support those experiencing homelessness and hunger. Community members of all ages have been studying together about dismantling racism. We have connected with a multi-faith coalition of congregations in our city called POWER to learn about their work for racial justice, economic dignity, and educational equity. This month, BZBIers are texting and calling one another to make sure that each and every person in our community has what they need to vote, to make our voices heard in November's critical election. BZBIers will be out in the parks and outside windows this afternoon to blow shofar safely for one another, to trumpet chiru ah, to remind one another to stay awake to keep breathing, to keep our ears and our eyes, our hearts and our hands open to those who are most vulnerable, to keep on keeping on. We are courageous midwives for a new world. There is work to be done. She is almost here. Hayom harat olam. The voice of the shofar not only expresses our tears and our longing and alerts us to our sacred obligations to pursue justice, 
It is this very same instrument that we take up to announce the arrival of a world redeemed. According to the Torah, every 50 years when the Jubilee year arrived, the Israelites were obligated to return property to its original owners and to let all slaves go free. The shofar would be sounded to announce that the moment of liberation had arrived. As the Torah says in the book of Vayikra, as it is inscribed on our city's famous bell, proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. The rabbis teach that the shofar's cry of truah is related to the word tiro'em, which means to break the chains. The shofar calls us to break the chains of all who are enslaved. The voice of the shofar summons us to remake the world so that all who are oppressed may be truly free. This Rosh Hashanah, I am imagining our beloved Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg sounding the shofar on high as her soul ascends to heaven, urging us to be unrelenting in our pursuit of justice, to keep fighting for the things that matter most, and to draw others close along the way. The voice of the shofar proclaims, yes, another world is possible. Take courage. With the help of God, we will midwife her into life together. We begin today. Hayom Harat Olam. Breathing with one another, we lift up our shofarot. Today, from our homes and out in the parks, in our Musaf service and before the sun sets. May we tune into all of the voices, voices of pain and power, voices of purpose and possibility. May the voice of the shofar restore our hope. A new world is arriving on this day. Listen for her breathing. Tikiya Gedola. She is already on her way. <laughs>